for those of you who want me to do a DAO of the day at a reasonable hour, I'm here at eight. <laughs> um, love you guys. How are, how is everybody doing today? Yes. The DAO of the day is here at a reasonable hour. Finally, uh, I've been doing them at, you know, crazy hours recently. Cause I've been flying around doing some things, uh, in Virginia where my sister is and, uh, and yeah, it's been, uh, uh, it's been good, but I am I am feeling good today. Hope you are as well. Looking forward to doing some Tao of the Day with you. Oh, Julie is here, and she is ready for some Tao. Uh, I'm Julie... ready for some Tao. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, my dear? It has been a while. I'm I was all right. Thinking it's about been a while. You. I have missed you incredibly. But I thought, no, I will give you space to miss me as well. <laughs> <laughs> as as I have, as I have, I've been thinking Lovely. about thinking about you and, and your countdown, and thinking about my countdown, and like yeah. I, I, I'm I'm beyond the double digits. I'm nine days away from leaving. Oh, nine days! I've got to put it in my calendar. I've got so, to put yeah. that in my calendar because I must remember. It's very important to me to remember <laughs> when you start on that journey. Yeah, well, wow. I'm, stepping, I'm stepping into the dark retreat ten days from tomorrow, and wow. um, and but I'll be leaving on the twenty fourth, and um, and I'm going to be doing a couple talks on the Dow or, or on the um, on the dark retreat before then. One at Nothing. least of just like, hey, I'm leaving in X number of days, like mm. you know, and and I'm gonna and I'm gonna be doing the Dow of the day, and I believe I'll be doing the Dow of the day on the twenty fourth. I may I may cut it off on the twenty third, but mm. but I may come in the day before I the day I leave and and do wow and do one last one before I head out. So we shall. Oh see. no, crikey! I'm just gonna say, hey Martin John, I love you. When you come out the other end and you're a different person than when you went in. I'm going to love you still. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, like I, I have to, I have to, I have to stay, I have to stay grounded because, uh, and I talked about this yesterday when I did the DAO, this idea that, um, yeah. that I still have to get a negative COVID test. Anything can happen between now and then. And, and if I, if I can't, if I don't, if, if I have a positive COVID test, I won't be able to go. And I have to be open to that. It has to be okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, just keep everyone away. Don't breathe on anyone. <laughs> Don't let anyone breathe on you. Well, you know, like I and and I got to visit. I got to visit uh, the oral surgeon today, and I got to see my dentist. And and so, like, there's there's all sorts of places that uh, that stuff can happen. So so oh, I'm just yeah. I'm I'm letting myself just be where I'm at, and we're gonna we're gonna we're just gonna be here, and it's gonna be You'll okay. Be fine. You'll Everything's be fine. gonna be good. Yeah. yeah. Whether, yeah. wet, no matter what, it's going to be great. Yeah, you're going to win it. That's right. My sister mm -hmm. just said, hey, that's the number guy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The number guy. So, so we've got a number. Thinking. Yeah, what is it? 23. 23. No. Yeah. She was thinking 23 as well. She's See? here. Chris is here. So oh, our what? number is for us today. All right. Well, then everybody pay attention. I'm going <clears> to <throat> when you have nothing to say, you may as well keep your mouth shut. Yes. <laughs> Quality. I love that. The wind, the wind and the rain don't last forever. If nature knows to give it a rest sometimes, so should you. Oh, lovely. I hear you. I'll shut up. <laughs> if you're, if you're ready for the Tao, you can live the Tao. If you're ready to succeed, you can live with success. If you're ready to fail, you can live with failure. Yeah. Trust wow. your instincts and Ooh. others will trust you. That is absolutely wonderful. <laughs> like it is answer, a good one. Isn't it? yeah. It's the answer. It's the yeah. answer right there. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Because, you know, I have actually thought about that lately. I have been quiet. Yeah. Because I've had nothing to say. What's the point in 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 just tootling on all the time? God, I give people an headache. <laughs> it's absolutely true. You know? And and here's the thing, so often when we speak, we're 
we're in the back of our minds, we're telling ourselves, would you just give it a rest? Yeah, I get that. You know, <laughs> you know, like you're speaking and you're like, oh, they don't understand. I got to keep going. And it's like, oh, does it even matter? You know, does it even yeah. like they're, they're not even listening. How many times are we on the phone talking to someone and we're like, you know, I'm done here. And we just can't, yeah. we just can't give it up. We're like, we can't, what, what I like to call, give up the ghost, right? We can't, it's like, just let it go. And if you can right. trust your instincts and just be like, oh, just shut the hell up, Garcia. You know, mm. like, you don't, you don't have to keep going on about this. No, no, just, just <laughs> yeah, you're blooming right. Yeah. <laughs> Known already. It's there already. People That's know right. Already. I don't need to say this stuff. Right. And I do, I do catch myself sometimes saying, stop doing the justification. Who are you justifying to? <laughs> right. You know, and, and it's <laughs> funny because, like, I had opened 23 on the Stephen Mitchell, uh, you know, like the Stephen Mitchell uh, translation. And for some reason, like, I was just like, no, I'm going to go to the other one. I'm going to go to Hogan and, and we're going to do that. And uh, this this translation is so, so simple. Right. And we're going to go through it again. So 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 we can hear it again. When you have nothing to say, you may as well keep your mouth shut. Like, I love that. Like, like, I mean simple simple and you, mm -hmm. you you may as well you just like like you have nothing to say like don't try to just fill the space who cares that the space is empty let it be empty He's it doesn't have, i'm telling you did you hear what she said <laughs> she said no when she, when she gets on wisdom you're the first ad <laughs> <laughs> You know, and, and, and this is coming from someone who, who, who speaks a lot, but you know, even, even, I, mean, I don't know if you, if you, if, I mean, you've heard me, even when I speak, there are times where I just let it be quiet and people yeah. are like, Oh, Oh, you cut off there. And I was like, no, I'm just being quiet. Cause you sometimes know, and, if you, if you don't give that space of silence, you can't absorb. Mm -hmm. And you can't hear. <laughs> Like if you, yes. if you just keep going on and on and on and on and on, well, I, the first thing people do is stop listening. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and here it continues to say, the wind and the rain don't last forever. If nature knows enough to give it a rest sometimes, so should you. And this is like, this is. <laughs> so love it. I'm absolutely loving this one so much. <laughs> You know, like, like, absolutely give it a rest, you know, like you don't need, you don't need to prove your point, you know, and, and that goes to that, you know, like back to the Stephen Mitchell. And I'm, I'm wondering if, uh, if this is the same, uh, no, uh, it's not the same verse, but you know, there's that, that there's, um, no, oh, I forget. I, I lost it, but either way, um, if you don't need to prove your point, like wise men, don't need to prove their point. Men who need to prove their point aren't wise. You know, it's like, yes. like yeah. if you're sitting here trying to get people to understand you and to do what you want them to do, you know, like they, you just get in your own way. You get in the way of the message. Everyone is out here like, I got a message, I got a message and I want to deliver this message. It's like, give it a rest already. You know, yeah. nature, nature knows not to rain 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So shut the hell up. I just love this so much. I am so downloading this. I am, and I'm <laughs> keeping it with me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, go on. The verse itself is so simple. It almost shuts itself up as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it, the the Stephen Mitchell uh, translation is about twice as long as this, mm. you know, and I really like how this is just oh so simple, and yeah. it uses really simple terms like give it a rest, you know, shut, keep your mouth shut, like, you know, I was I was watching my nephew uh, the last couple days, and I had to keep reminding him just shut the hell up. <laughs> You know, like when I walk in the room, you don't have to speak because what you're doing is you're defending something you're not yet in trouble for. 
and maybe you won't get in trouble for, but you're predicting. And so you just, you just fill the space with your yeah. own guilt. Yeah, that is the thing about shutting the hell up. Is sometimes you're thinking behind the scenes, why am I still waffling? Why am I trying to prove a point? Why? Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And you're covering it up with the waffle. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So just shutting the hell up sometimes is your biggest lesson. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, 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 you know, like, and, and so it's about, it's about, are you, are you ready to be in that quietness? And in yourself, because that quietness is like you in your mind. Once you open your mouth, you put it out in space and then you put it on other people. Yeah. You know, like with my nephew, it's like I'd walk in and he'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm playing with the cat. And I'm like, mm, actually, you're not. And I know you're not because you said that. Right? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> So, so, so we're going to, we're, we're going to take a step back and be like, well, why would you say that? Right. And, and he's not ready to acknowledge where he is and what he's doing. And so he's trying to get, a, get out in front of it, but yeah. he's, but he's doing that with excuse and with pacifying and with all of the things that he does, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that, that I think is where this next set of uh of lines comes from when you're ready for the Tao, you can live with the Tao. when you're ready for to succeed you can live with success if you're ready for to fail you can live with failure and i think that you know relates back to maybe my you know like my up oh, i might not be able to go because i might get covid who knows you know like it's not failure it's not success it's not the Tao. I mean, it is just what is. It is yeah. you know, that that becomes the Tao. You know, like that. That's you can live with it. Yeah. You know, you yeah. know, it does, it's not. It's not about. It's not about speaking about it. It's not about proving it. It's not about. It's not about what other people think. It's about where you are right now, and that's not anywhere, right? That's just here, and here, in the void, isn't anywhere. Yeah. Hmm. Absolutely. I like that. Yeah. Oh, golly. But what a great thing to do today. I've just so <laughs> I've, I've popped on it. I saw you come up and I'm like, today, now. Yes, now. <laughs> you know, and and <laughs> you told me to shut my face. <laughs> Quality. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love it. I love it. And, and this is, this is, I was, I was thinking about this. So, so I have a, a group, so I did a mindfulness based stress reduction group, you know, a while back, yeah. I, I joined this group mm -hmm. and it's an eight week program. And after the program, they got a, they set up a WhatsApp group. Well, just because I am who I am, I stood, I said, okay, at 12 o'clock Eastern, the time that we all were getting together anyway, on Thursdays, I am going to set up just a continuation of this group. So if you guys want, you could come and join the Zoom call and, and I'll be there. And if anybody else comes, then great. And, and that's just me doing what I do. You know, like yeah. I just, it wasn't, it wasn't me trying to get anywhere or do anything. Well, well. It's the, just or, being available. It's just yeah. being available for no, for no good, for, for, for no progression or for no failure. You are right. just available. You are present. That's right. It. And, yeah. and for an hour, I decide that I'm going to be present once a week for this group that I was a part of. And there are about 10 people that come through that group from the original group of 30 and yeah. um and the people who run the mindfulness-based stress reduction group were like in our entire history since like the 70s <laughs> like you're the only group that continually gets together after a year of the group being over what is your secret <laughs> and, and i and you know it was like i don't know like people just show up. I show up without any expectation. I show up with nothing, you know, and, yeah. and, and here where, where, where this verse ends reminds me of that, where it says, trust your instincts and others will trust you. 
Yeah. You know, I, you just do what you do. Yeah. And, and everyone will fall into place. If I was there telling everybody about like the reasons why they should show up, if I was there telling everybody why, why it was good and why they needed it, well, of course they're not going to show up. I mean, exactly. maybe if they paid for it, they would, because then it'd be a loss. But this has <laughs> nothing to do with that, right? This has nothing to do with wins or losses or success or failure or anything. It is just, it is just here, present. Lovely. Massive thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, everybody. Is that Chris in the background? Is that right? Yes, yeah, Chrissy. Yeah. Chrissy, thank you. It's great to have you both up. Dr. Rao is coming up and going to, uh, uh, you know, tell me what's up. Hi, Martin. Hello, my brother. How are you? I am good. How are you? I am doing very well. We had a very we had we had a beautiful day this morning about not not speaking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, you know that uh, in Sanskrit it's called maunam vyakhyanam. That means maunam means silence. Mm -hmm. Vyakhyanam means Silence speaks. Ah, yes. Si oh, that's beautiful. So there is this phenomena which is actually historically accounted for. Um, like uh, some uh, the sages uh, that I know, they are not talking at all. They're sitting there in silence, right? The people go with a lot of questions to them because they know they are the realized beings, they have all the answers. But you know, when they go there, um, Westerns, Easterns, all of them go went there and they documented on video too. The moment they sit in their presence, all their questions were answered without that man opening his mouth. The phenomenal thing, you know, uh, that is volumes about uh, us being uh, silent, how beneficial it is and all that, you know? Yes. When you were reading that uh, Tao, and then I thought, okay, I should share this with uh, Martin, you know? Yes, please. So what does it mean? Um, uh, I practice this in a little way, my own way. Uh, I don't, I'm not claiming I'm like those sages because we're far <laughs> behind that. That's, right? yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, yeah. Is what we can do is though, uh, I tell people, why do you have to take vacation? Take vacation every day. That's and right. They look at me quizzically. What do you mean vacation every day? I say, vacate your mind mm -hmm. every day. Do use it, but then don't retain all sorts of uh, unnecessary impressions, unnecessary opinions, unnecessary conclusions about people and keep them in you so that you won't relate to the person next he comes to you as he is. Yes. There's another question, Martin. I think you'll find it very, uh, uh, you know, probably. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. Always intriguing. Go on. <laughs> yes. Yes, Suppose you know a guy for 30 years, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you have so many interactions and so much of life went with you, right? Right. When he comes to you, do you look at him from those 35 years or do you look at him as he is now? That's not a, something answerable. Only thing is, you examine yourself when that incident comes and that instant comes. Mm. Sometimes it is the image that comes for us. Yeah. So that is the thing, you know, if you can really take away all of that, then it will be really um, easy to relate to him as he is. And also, uh, he will appreciate you better because you are really re relating to him as he is. Maybe he is regretting some things he did to you. Maybe he's already changed heart and all that. By you revoking in your mind, they all come up. Mm. Yeah, I, I always I always look at, you know, like when you are presented with somebody. Mm. See, it's um, not an explanation. It's like an actual what is happening. That is what we have to be honest about ourselves when we, like I have a patient and usually I know the medical history and everything, but also I know how he was behaving with, uh, uh, you know, with the staff, with the front office, with the billing, or how he's behaving and all that. Uh -huh. People are really nice to me, but they're very really nasty to them. <laughs> so, uh, mm -hmm. 
when they come to me, they will don the biggest, uh, nice uh, armor, but actually uh, they will be shouting at the front desk or uh, screaming at the nurse or uh, really giving hard time to the building. Like that kind of things go on, right? Yeah. So I tend to know everything that's going on, but then um, do I bring that in my relationship with him? That's the question for me, right? Mm. That's how the life became a lab for me of who I am. Yes, of who you are. Yeah, and then of who you are. Yeah, and then you not be- of who he is, right? And that's no, the big no. and, and that's and that's what and that's yeah. the lesson, right? When we see, yeah. yes, and that's when the, we when when yeah, we judge, matter. yeah, it doesn't matter whatever he is. That's the point, that's right? right? And then that's um, right. So, what are you doing? Are you doing with your image, or are you dealing with them right now? So, what I need to do? What is the suffering? Why he sick? I sort the help. Just attend to that. That that kind mm-hmm. of thing was uh, uh, very very um, you know uh, cleansing and also uh, you know I think uh, somebody said like uh, you use the relationship of life whatever the things that we have relationship with the people things whatever it is you use that as a mirror. Yes yes yes. This they is did. this is this is. This is everything. This is like, we, we cannot, we like, cause, cause you know, like your question earlier, the, 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 you know, rhetorical or whatnot question of like, do you see him as the 23 years or do you see him as the image now? And I'm always, for me, it's always like, well, you're seeing yourself. Yes. The thing is, people get caught up in the image because they don't do this uh, vacationing I'm talking about. If you can get rid of those images on a daily basis, then um, you will be able to do that, you know? But the thing is, for that, you need to understand the thought and quiet in it. That is where this mauna silence comes. Yes, and and, 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 and I, you know, like I, I, I looked up Silence Speaks um, and it, it, there, there's a book, apparently, uh, Silence Speaks from the chalkboard of Baba Haridas. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of these uh, uh, people, they sit in, you know, take example of what is the, the very, very first man who uh, was uh, sitting uh, in yoga. He is called Adi Yoga. Adi means first, first yogi, whoever started this first, right? Mm-hmm. It seems he has no lineage. Nobody knows where he came from. But he sat down there uh, some 15,000 years ago, I believe. And when he first came to Saturn, he was a remarkably uh, very attractive figure because he had kept up with all these practices, right? And yeah, you can't, like us. Yeah, you can't help, <laughs> you can't help noticing, I believe, you know? Yeah. Then um, he, he, uh, he sits down there, though everybody also sits down him, he doesn't talk. He goes on sitting there, few hours ago, few days ago, few weeks ago, few months ago. The, uh, everybody fell off except seven people that stayed with him. Mm-hmm. And then those seven people, they're called Sapta Rishis, seven Rishis, seven yogis, right? And then they kind of went around the India. And I mean, this is a legend. I don't know what is the really happening. Of course. But it's a legend they were telling her. Uh, and then they have spread the one of them that came to Southern India, that much we know. He is said to be lived for 400 years, but mm. they lived 150, 130 very easily. That was there, but beyond that, I don't know whether uh, that was true. But then that's the documented evidence or whatever. And then uh, um, we don't know really. But the thing is, what he did was very, very remarkable, Martin. He took all those uh, spiritual insights and made them into daily things that you could do. And they. You don't have to know about it. You don't have to know Tao, Brahman, any of that. But just by having the practices uh, in daily life, like for example, uh, you kind of get up in the morning and you know, thank the Lord. That means you're grateful. Yeah. Right? And then when you, before you go to work, you stop at the temple and pray. That means you are submitting to the divine, right? Something bigger than you. And then when you go to the work, you say this work 
is my worship. Yeah. Those kind of simple things that they put in in the daily life, ancient uh, India I'm talking about, I'm not talking about now. Now these people are as uh, much as anybody else, you know, so I don't, I don't want to say that they are. Of course. But what it is, is that you, that uh, spiritual insights that people had, they implemented in daily life. Uh, for example, early in the morning you get up because they say, you get up in the morning, then you will be in touch with yourself better, but then all the thought activity starts, right? Yeah. And this vacationing the mind also came from there. In the night, what it is, is forgive everybody, let go everything, and just uh, immerse in the divine. Then you are vacationing every day. Yes. yes. Vacationing the mind every day. That is the thing I kind of do it, and it is very easy to get up in the morning fresh right <clears throat> yeah and, and that's fresh eyes you yeah, know everything and you know like that's why getting up before the sun for me yeah. always yeah. gives me that ability i think when i get up and the sun is up mm -hmm. my mind wants to race sooner yeah um and so when i get up before the sun i can just i can be present and i can do that journal, I can do that meditation, I can do that quiet stillness that I need. And I can do, you know, whether that's moving movement in terms of meditation, in terms of yoga. I, I will do another query that you'll find fascinating, Martin. Mm -hmm. You know, whenever people sleep, ordinary people, the real yogi, he's awake. Yeah. And whenever the yogi uh, is sleeping, all the other people are awake. What does it mean? You know, uh, it means when you are awake to the worldly affairs, you are sleeping to the divine. Yes. Thou or Brahman. But that is what the, most people do. It's not a fault or anything. That's a fact. You know? Whereas when they are really awake to the external world, he is uh, really asleep to that, but he is awake to the divine. Mm. So it's a question of, are you really with your Tao? Are you with your Brahman? Are you with your, uh, you know, internal uh, nature? Then you are really awake when everybody else is sleeping. Yeah. And then you're sleeping to the materialistic world. That is the essence of it. But that's a very, there are some poems like that, that are very quandary. But then um, they convey a deeper meaning. If you understand them, oh my God, such a relief. Yeah. You know, and I love, I love the idea that like to understand them mm -hmm. is like, it's, it's not, I always look at it like, if you think you understand it, you're probably missing something. <laughs> you know, like, like there is, it, it's, it's, it's not about understanding. It is about no. being. It is actually realizing the truth of yes, it. Yes, yes, yeah. Comes after the understanding. At least, uh, if you don't understand, your mind will run in other directions. Right, right. If you don't know that is a there's a Tao, there's a Brahman, and then that is a state, but not something uh, that you could really grasp Explain with Explain or grasp, right? Yeah, with yes. knowledge. Uh, that is there, but then general public ought to understand is they have to understand. What does he mean by that? Everybody is sleeping and he's awake. Everybody is awake, he's sleeping. What does it mean? It doesn't make sense when you read the poem. That's what I'm saying, understand. Yes. The essence of that poem. But then actual state is not within the grasp of the understanding. The truth that is beneath the understanding is the one that we are talking about. But to stay in the truth is your subjective state. Yes. But to get to that lots of times, you need to, um, okay, first of all, I'm just getting up, doing my work, eating and sleeping, mm -hmm. what is there? Then, um, and something happens in life, then the, you need the understanding of this truth. Uh, otherwise, you will not have the relief from that suffering, that kind of thing, right? So yeah. human beings have this inquisitive nature, inquiry nature, what it does is, it leads you from, understanding to thought quietness to intuitive awareness and all that but to come to that state even 
Um, why do people take vacation? Uh, why do you look for the Saturday and Sunday? Why can't they be the same like every day and joyful and all that? These are the reasons. Mm. And I love the vacation, like vacation in your mind. Mm. Do it every day, then you don't need to go anywhere. That's right. And that's how, that's how I've always, like I've always been like, I don't want to vacation from my life. I want mm -hmm. my life to be full, meaning that there's vacation. Like it's, it's not, it's not me vacating. Just like I was always, you know, I, even though I'm going on a retreat, I was always kind of against retreats because it's like, I don't want to retreat my life. Yeah. But the many people, People want to retreat because they're so occupied with <laughs> their mind. Right. Absolutely. And I want to be able to like be on vacation a little bit every day, you know, like, like, cause there is back and forth. It is a pendulum. Actually you come to a state. Come back up. You just dropped. So come back up and, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll wrap this up. Yeah. That's beautiful. All right, you were saying I come to a state. Come to a state where moment to moment you will be on vacation. Yes. That means your ego is created for that moment. It has done what it has to do, then you get rid of it. How yeah. how not by being the thought, by being the conscious being. Yeah, by being the observer. Yeah, well, conscious being that uh -huh. is re using the thought to do the stuff, but doesn't allow the thought to build an egoic entity, the residue. That is the problem. Right. So each moment you live and then you do not allow the ego. Uh, see, I come here and I talk and I really come with the intention of relating to the people. I do. Uh, but then they take opinion on me. I don't take opinion on other but everybody, I relate at the same level, but then according to their uh, questions, their uh, circumstance and all that, we may uh, come down to that and do that. But every time what you protect yourself from is building that egoic nature to continue. You move yeah. it to... So other thing is, it's called Atma Chintan. What it is, is you question where this other thought is coming from mm -hmm. and then you go there and stay there yeah that's and that's a big <clears throat> you know that's for me you know because i'm always working at that i'm always working to be in that space of mm -hmm. not letting the egoic mind kind of take over and it, it does it does slide in and i recognize it and then i sit with it and then i go back right like and so it's always this kind of yeah. back and forth and it's really just having having the awareness enough to be like oh that's happening that's, that's good it's fine you know, that it's happening what is your problem is you get exposed to the minds who yes. are like that yes yes then well, you want to be nice to them and all that then um, you kind of uh, get into that remnant of mind a little bit Otherwise, you cannot relate to them at all, you know? So, but then once you realize that I can be myself, the next moment that you are conscious and aware of it, you are out of it. Yes. You're using the thought to, like I'm talking to Martin, I'm trying to relate a point. I have no intention of changing him or anything. Right. I, I just be in my conscious being. Yeah, absolutely. That's it. And, and that's, and in, in doing that and in practicing that from moment to moment mm -hmm. and in, in being in that space from moment to moment as, as, you know, as much as we can for the moment, you know, like, cause that is, that is, that is the growth. Call that it is a practice, you, Martin. I would call it a practice. Yes, you know? it is a practice. Uh, Absolutely. More like, more like a, uh, be in the conscious thing is you really you just be that yeah yeah that's not a practice because you, there's no method it's a state of being you know and the moment you see that this ego remnant will not be there it will fall off by itself it's a beautiful uh, no energy involved and right. just be all the time 
I mean, it's not something uh, but, uh, really uh, away from the natural state, but we kind of, the mind is so mercurial, it imposes on the natural state very quickly and then continues. Yeah, yeah. No, so we, you and me may have moments of this quietness and all of that, that's fine, we'll hang on to it, you know. But people who don't even experience that in a second or main minute, uh, I can tell you a lot of intellectuals, I know that they do it all the time. Uh, they think they are, they are vital, they are alive because they are thinking so much. But they are yeah. not even living because they are in the thought, something uh, abstract, not in the real life. Yeah. So all you have to do is be. That's right. That's right. <laughs> no practice. It's funny. I mean, be. I've read. I, I, yeah. Just the first. Be. You, like you know what, time, what the quality of it you know you know that that's why i'm bringing it to you yes yes i i love that and being is you know i mean i've read i don't know who it was um someone gave me a book and i had read it and and i was and i gave it back they're like wasn't it great and i was just like yeah it could have been a lot shorter all he had to do was say just be <laughs> Dude, that's that's, I was like, words. Why, why did why did I read two hundred pages of this when it could have just been two words? <laughs> you know, I have uh, thousands of books. I you know all the time. That's true. But then different things, right? Medicine, science, and, of course, of course. But also the philosophical. Work. And then uh, my eyes opened when I really was brought to the fact. Hey, first read your book. Yes. Oh God, that's exactly what. Yeah. That is, that is, that is everything. Like if you don't, yeah. Some, of, is, some of the women friends I have on this uh, you know, um, LinkedIn, other ways, they really worship the books. They think they are giving them a lot of knowledge and all that. We are not denying that. But then you get onto this uh, repetition of somebody else's without really owning it in the terms of real experience, right? So subject matters are not really from the book subject has to be studied by the subject itself and then only you will have the insight into your real uh, what is going on otherwise we tend to quote we tend to really that's all our nature but it's fine but then how less can you quote and let it come from you is the thing that i think we will realize slowly that's okay uh, but then uh, once you have that read that book, I think you'll know everything. Otherwise, everything is just like a projection of the mind. That's right. Yeah. And protection of the of the identity. Ah, yeah, you got it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, oh, Martin. Like absolutely. You. Thank you for thank you for thank you for joining me. Thank you for that. Because like, you know, the idea of shutting your mouth and and which is what we were talking about with Julie brought this up is, is so it's so it's so important to just yeah. be with yourself yes thank you bye-bye thank you bye-bye so if anybody has a number between 1 and 81 that they want to uh run through with the dow i would love to have you join me um we had julie come up and we had a beautiful 23 we read through it was all about keeping your mouth shut and uh, opening up your mind and opening up your heart to what is. Um, and then Dr. Rao joined us to kind of fill in some of the some of the depth and history that that is the Brahman and which is a brother to the Tao. Um, and yes, I wanted to uh, be able to have him come up, of course. So if anybody is out there and wants to come up and pick a number between one and 81, I would love to have you and we can talk about the Tao. I'm going to move on and I'm going to read number 71 for myself today. 71 states, not knowing is true knowledge. Presuming to know is a disease. First, realize that you're sick and then you can move towards health. The master is her own physician. She has healed herself of all knowing. Thus, she is truly whole. <clears throat> So another short one, but, but this is, uh, and, and, and maybe this kind of relates back to the, keep your mouth shut, you know, give it a rest sometime, but not knowing is true knowledge. This is the first line of 71, not knowing is true knowledge. If you could 
allow yourself to not know. Imagine every situation. You know, I was, as I was mentioning to Julie earlier, I was, uh, you know, watching over my my nephew who's seven, and he knows everything. He knows everything, and 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 he is definitely sick <laughs> because he he has no interest in learning but he has a lot of interest in knowing and proving himself he has a lot of interest in proving that he knows but he has no interest in listening or learning at all um and you know he's learned that probably because of his parenting and and what he believes is praised uh in the world and and you know how he is supposed to act in the world so there's nothing wrong with that but not knowing is true knowledge because we don't know anything right you can you can talk about math and you can talk about language you can talk about right and wrong you can talk about all of these things but not knowing especially as it relates you know i was doing a meditation this morning <clears throat> i was sitting this morning however you want to call it sitting meditating whatever and and i was just thinking about the idea you know i mentioned to julie the fact that i still have to get a negative uh, uh covid test in order to travel to guatemala to do my dark retreat and i was like i don't know what the results of that is going to be and so <clears throat> what's important is that I can be here and present no matter what the future holds. So not knowing and not attaching, as, as Dr. Rao and I were talking about, not attaching myself to the goal of going on this dark retreat. The dark retreat will be what it is. And if I can't go, I can't go. And that's going to have to be okay. And that's all that is going to be. So not knowing is true knowledge, not not approaching every situation with the concept that I might not know. Let me pay attention to what this situation brings. You know, I've had clients in the past. I'm currently working with a client that is <clears throat> knows all the answers, knows everything. And it's really it's my job when somebody knows the answer to get them to a place that, you know what, maybe you don't. Can you can you? Can you be in a space in which it's okay to not know the answer? Because if I can get you to not know the answer, then I can get you to be in a space that is, um, be in a space that's more open. If I can get you to not know what the answer is, Energy lady is going to join me. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to have to return to 71, which is always, it's always a treat to come back. But what, what are we returning to? I'll return to 2071. What's your number today? 68. 68. All right. Well, that's close. So let's just scroll up to 68. <laughs> that was good. How are you doing, love? I'm doing good. I was like, hey, he's still on. Yay. I am. Yeah. No, it's a, like I, I came on at a reasonable hour today. <laughs> well, it's not bad as my hours change. And I, um, I, I really made a commitment to take care of my morning routine instead of jumping on wisdom. You know, I, like my best days are days where I have three hours before I turn on any digital thing. <laughs> like, you know what? And that's the thing. I listened to you and Catherine when she was talking about business intuition. Yeah. You know that one? Yeah. And it really, it just popped up on my phone. You know how that works. And I went, okay, okay, I get it. You know, and I just, I loved your conversation with her. It just really resonated with me. So it helped me make a shift. I didn't even know what I was going to do. <laughs> yep. And those are those, you know, like that's all, it's all about just like being in the present and, and being and, and where yeah. you are right now. And you know, like that in 71, the one that I read for myself, like the first line is not knowing is true knowledge, right? Like when you don't know, like when you, it, it, we, we really like to fill our lives with knowledge and the right thing and doing the right thing and stuff, but you never know. And it's like being quiet with yourself and not knowing and not being, not being, you know, controlled by stuff, but being in your body, even though that, that may seem like contradictory a little bit. Like if you wake up and meditate every morning or wake up and journal every morning, that seems to be, but it's like really kind of let's, let's clear our mind so we can start the day rather than fill our mind as we start the day. And you know, and the reason that I've experienced and I can only talk for me is um, the reason why I went in the opposite direction of what you're saying is healthy 
you know, in the, in the energetic thing is because I kept being told that you got to really get this done. If you don't get this done, then you're going to miss out and blah, 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 blah. Oh, so yeah. I, I started chasing, you know, that rabbit that wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? Yep, yep, yep. There's, there's so, so much fear in this world about like time and, and not having enough and, and not being, not doing the right thing. And, yeah, well, like, shit, that causes anxiety and depression. So people get to make money. <laughs> that's right. Uh, because if you're anxious and depressed, you're going to buy products. Like that's, that's it, that's it, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> I love her, and dollar. I know we're going to go to sixty-eight. I loved what you were just saying before I hit to go on. I love that that conversation. That was awesome. Oh, beautiful. Okay, yeah. so sixty-eight. The best athlete wants his opponent at his best. The best general enters the mind of the enemy. The best businessman serves the communal good. The best leader follows the will of the people. All of them embody the virtue of non-competition. And it's not that they don't love to compete, but they do it in the spirit of play. <laughs> it, is, it is this, in this, they are like children and in harmony with the Tao. <laughs> Sorry, but really? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You wrote that on purpose. You changed it. I, I changed did. it. That's a, a, you know. <laughs> no, you know. It's, it's, it's only 3,000 years old. I can do whatever. Hey, you know what? You totally could have been down the cheek. Just let it go. Oh, <laughs> um, no, it's, uh, <laughs> it's really cool because I had an epiphany yesterday, and I just say epiphany. It's connecting the dots, and they just popped yeah. in because I've been doing a lot of writing and stuff wondering Good. i keep asking i keep asking myself what is this thank god i'm a writer you know mm -hmm. it's like what is it that i'm missing i looked in my my mirror and i said tell me what it is that i'm just not excited you know and just went on and all i heard was write all right so yeah. i started writing i did i started writing and i'm like okay and all i heard was break it down so i broke it down you know because people tell me oh you're vast you're big you're this and i'm like i'm only me man and I wrote it down and I all got in and I did some fine tuning the next day, blah, blah. And then I started laughing because I've been trying, I've been trying to figure out why people say it's big. And when I broke it down, I went, all right, there's different compartments. Okay. All right. I've got this, you know, in my head. Actually, I was talking to myself. I wasn't in my head. And I went, wait a minute. Life's paradise is the center. Hmm. And what I'm teaching is connectivity and playfulness. Because mm -hmm. they go together, which you just said. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, so I'm not in charge. I just get to be me. I mean, the way I broke it down, and I'm like, oh my God, now, okay, this is awesome. And then you're reading this, and the last thing it says is you're supposed to be playful. I'm like, no. shut up. <laughs> You know, it's interesting, you know, like we, you know, like, I, I mean, I do this and, and, and you work in this mode and there's a lot of people that work in this mode. And there's the, this thought in my mind that it's like, you know, we have to recognize that like everybody is going to be here. Nobody is lost. Right. Like, just like oh, we, yeah. we were in this space and we found the way for us. And, you know, like, and I think sometimes we can often get in our own way and say, well, others need us and they don't and we and by no. recognizing by recognizing they don't need us they no. they're going to be just fine is a really beautiful kind of way to approach this work of of creating because when we do that we we can inspire others to find their language around this and, and the thing is we yeah and the only thing we can do is be and 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 just that's right put that, just to put that love out there because i'm telling you my son and his wife do everything to challenge me and i'm like y you're not gonna win right and and that's what it is and then because there is nothing to win right no <laughs> and, and, and she th she thinks she has me pegged my son's in the middle of it i can see it now and i'm yeah. like oh i can totally pull out you know i could just back up and so yeah. he knows this about me. So he approaches it differently. And I always come out with flying colors. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I'm not attached to her results. And she she's going through her own thing. And, and she's portraying me. No, she's portraying me as a mother that I am not. <laughs> right, right. But no. And that's, you, not, and that's not your responsibility to change her mind. 
absolutely not. I have no desire inside of me. It gives me anxiety if I think about it. So I'm like, yeah. all right. But no, yeah, that's really cool because the thing that I've always said is I don't want to be in charge of who you are when it comes to like 68 and what, what the center is about. I don't want to be in charge of you. All no. I want to do <clears throat> is shine a light and see who comes in to play. You know, I really like how this starts because it says the best athlete wants his opponent at his best. And it's like, that's me, you know, yeah. that. And, and that's the, you know, like with you and your daughter-in-law, um, it's this, it's this thing where it's just like, oh, this is, we're just, I, I want you to be the best that you can be. And, and in this, like, this is, this isn't competing. No, you know, you're not competing for anything, nope. but it is, but, but they are competing. Like she is competing. She is trying to do accomplish some, some point total. And, and you're here just kind of like, Oh, this is, this is an engagement. This is something that's just happening. Right. And, and, so, and sometimes I sit there and I go, <clears throat> okay, wait, that just happened. So that means that she's used to it that way. So I think I'm just going to step back. Right. And that's what I do. Cause she goes, eh, and I went, you know, <laughs> and that's beautiful because that, that moves us into the next line, which is the yes. best gen general enters the mind of his enemy. You know, like like she may be presenting herself as your enemy, but you're not presenting yourself as one. And so but but you are able to enter her mind and be like, oh, this is like. I'm not going to be able to accomplish anything by by attacking or, or doing anything. So I'm just going to step back because I understand the mind of this person. Right. And I didn't understand it because this is definitely the energies that I was <clears throat> that that I definitely learned as real. And I know that they're not real. I know that they're made up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, so, and I'm like, and I say made up in the sense because it's not causing any happiness to people. So it doesn't matter. I'm like, okay, well, but, and, but if I take it into the business sense and, you know, and I don't mean business, but what the center is about, it's the same thing. I don't want to get as an example on this, on this app wisdom. I don't want to get on wisdom and act as if I have wisdom and that I know what I'm doing and that I, you know, I got a plan. I want to get on wisdom and say, well, let's play on my playground. This is the topic. This is where I'm at let's talk. And right. it's going to allow me to gain so much because there's so many people in this world who think they know because they've done in the past and uh, no, and people don't even need to know what I've gone through. I, I don't right. even care. And this is such a beautiful thing. And I got to tell you, hmm, you're a good person to hang with. So oh. keep going. Thank you. And yeah, and I and I so many different ways, so many different reasons. You're you're reminding you, you and Catherine really got me. But you're reminding me. You're you're simply reminding me of who I am, that I was going, and I got detoured, and I mean yeah. that in a light sense. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. No. Absolutely. You know, for me, for me, and my interactions with everybody, it's so much about. Uh, just letting you know that you got this, like in, in this, in this very simple way of just like, no, you got this, you're good. Like you, you can do this. And, 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 you know, even though like, you know, maybe I've approached this from the beginning of just like, well, I went through this and I can help. And I'm just like, no, actually I can't. You can, right? you can. Buddy, you are so right. I'm not here to fix you. I'm here to be a presence. <laughs> and if we work, great. If we don't, I still love you. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, someone sent me something the other day describing me as like, you know, like, like I'm a, I'm, a, I'm kind of a log that burns really hot. And, uh, and if, you know, when you put another log next to that, mm -hmm. it starts a fire. But when you separate that log, that fire continues burning and you I don't need to do anything to to make that happen. It's just like the respect and the, and, and the mutuality that we hold. Yeah. And you know, the other thing I was thinking about with you and, and it's not just holding you, it's, it's reminding me is when you, as an example, you get off of this app, you might not be in the space that you're in right now in your mind because you're in a presence right now. And you know what that makes you human. Yeah, absolutely. 
And I, and I hold you in that space. I don't expect you to be that person. Like if you and I talked on the phone and you're not in that space, I'm not going to be sitting here going, where's Martin John? You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You know, like, and it, it's so important to understand that we all have, and there are days where I've come on here and I have been lackluster and what have yeah. you, you know, like, and, yeah. and not be able to connect and stuff, but it's like, you know, consistency is, is really important for me because of my background and because of, you know, the fact that I have allowed myself in the past to, you know, uh, not be consistent and not be, you know, who I am and, and, and what have you and all of the addiction stuff and whatnot. And, yeah. and that's who created this. And, and so and, I, I honor that, you know, and, and you know, and, and thank you for saying that because, <clears throat> and that's what, you know, I tell people all the time, consistency is key. And they go, what do you mean? I said, don't you get up every morning? Don't you eat every day? Don't you do? Yeah. And they're like, yeah, well, yeah. And I said, and it keeps you going, right? Yeah. Well, then the, it's every part. And I know that. And I know I haven't, like as an example, jumped here on this app and been very consistent. And I do know that the time is going to be aligned. I'm not even worried about it. I don't that's care. Right. Yeah. So, what, what else we got before so, we, so get, then we, get then we, we move into yeah we move into this last part you know we talk about the businessman and he works for the common good the best leader follows the will of the people all of them embody the virtue of non-competition and it's not that they don't love to compete it's not that we don't love to compete of course competing can be fun but we do that in the harmony in harmony with the Tao because we approach it as play but we do it in the spirit of play we engage with each other and we enjoy you know like one of the nice things about this wisdom app as we're talking about it is the fact mm -hmm. that there's there you can have so much disagreement and yet the respect for the other person to the person that we're talking to is always paramount it's the first thing and it doesn't get dissolved just because there's disagreement okay i'm gonna say something that's caveat before i th get thrown down i haven't always experienced that so that's just the space you're in oh yeah. um and i just and i do want to say that when i used to be in a drill team and been the leader for the horseback it, it was a youth um what you just described as you know people coming together not competing i know the difference between healthy competition and not because the competing is within yourself and I was trash belittled and attacked by all the leaders. So I'm so glad I get to bring it back again. Oh, yeah, me too. And I'm glad that, you know, you were able to hold on to that or at least regain that or recover that within yourself because you are such a beautiful leader. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate this and um, enjoy your day. But I really enjoy the fact that I got to hang and meet you. Oh, my. Uh, yeah, it's always wonderful. Um, I do have two people in the queue, Rachel and Will. Rachel, you were in first, so we're going to bring you in. Is that Rachel Cheeseman? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, Cheeseman. I knew a Cheeseman when I was in high school. You're not. You're not. You're not in the Chicagoland area, are you? No, Ohio. Oh, all right. Well, there it is. How are you? I, we have never met. I don't believe. I'm good. I've listened to a few of your talks. How are you? I'm doing very well. Thank you for thank you for listening. Um, so this is Dow of the day. Are you familiar with what we do? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. So so yeah, if you can pick a number between one and eighty one, we'll we'll go ahead and and talk through a Dow together. Number twelve. Number twelve. Off we go. Okay. Number twelve states: colors blind the eye, sounds deafen the ear, flavors numb the taste, thoughts weaken the mind, desires wither the heart. The master observes the world, but trusts his inner vision. He allows things to come and go. His heart is as open as the sky. What are some of your initial thoughts? Hmm, it's really cool. I was trying to see what to do today and I've been wanting to do a talk. I haven't started one. I've been on for a while. I've been in a few, but I haven't actually done my own first talk. Um, so I like art and stuff and that mm -hmm. kind of came to mind when you were saying colors, but, yeah. um, I'm trying to figure out what to do my first talk on. I know I just need to, you know, introduce myself, but what to actually do the talks on. Well, it will, it will start doing mm -hmm. my, my wisdom, whatever it is, mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> yeah, I know. 
<laughs> no, I'm, I, but, um, but yeah, well, let's see, let's see if there's something, if there's something here. So colors blind the eye. What is that? What is that? How does that resonate with you? That that's that line. Um, so I like art and there's an artist that does all of her drawings in black and white because the colors, uh, become too much for her and it takes from her art rather than adding to it. Hmm. And I tend to overdo my stuff a lot. So kind of, that's what I put to that. Oh, yeah. You know, like <clears throat> when you have when you have so many colors and so many things like it could, you know, I, I, so I'm an artist as well. Um, and there are times where I have taken photographs of my work and switched them to black and white on the computer so that I could um, so I could see what what is actually happening because like you sometimes you can't see what's going on when you have so many colors you, know, you can't right. actually see what the composition is because you know the red next to the blue they're actually the same hue but different colors right they're the same depth i think that's right hue right like the yeah the, it kind of yeah. like overdoes it i know you right mean. and then there's like vibration between two colors that you really get rid of when you move it to black and white, because if you have like an orange and a blue next to each other, they'll really vibrate and maybe that'll confuse the area. And when you look at it black and white, you're like, oh, that area that I thought was so active is now is now dead. But you didn't see that because the colors were so intense that it blinded you and it blinded you to that fact or whatnot. Right. Yeah, some things I like black and white as well. Yeah. So that's an interesting thing, you know, when we, uh, when you look at old, old paintings, they, so many of those paintings were because pigment was so rare, you had to use it really sparingly. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you would do things in black and white, and then you would glaze over it with thin layers of transparent color so that you mm -hmm. can uh, get the depth of color. But when you painted it in black and white first, you knew the composition, you knew it was a strong painting well before any color got put in at all. Hmm. That's a really cool idea. I like yeah. that. I haven't really heard it that way. I've seen it, yeah. but I haven't heard it described that way. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting, you know, cause, cause when you paint it in black and white, like if you were to paint cloth, if you paint cloth in black and white, you, you just make it look like cloth and then you can actually just wash the color over it without having to paint it again right you just wash that whole cloth in a transparent red and then the 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 darkness underneath will will contribute to the the structure of the image hmm. and then you go on oh no uh, i'm just listening that's pretty neat yeah and then we have uh sounds deafen the ear flavors numb the taste how do those resonate same sort of thing i think yeah pretty similar so maybe i don't want to come across too um out there but at the same time i wanted to be different than other people's talks that's so as i was listening to different people's i'm like and ah, they're all starting to they are starting to blend together <laughs> and uh so that's kind of it does sound very like you know kind of like what i was already thinking but i'm just not really sure where to go with it and uh so i just been listening to everybody's talks and and i'll join in here and there but i was like i'm gonna pick i'm gonna have to pick a number today because number 12 is like my birthday's 12 12 and I thought no, that's, well, that's, beautiful. Pick. that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. So uh, then, th so, so this is where this is where we are right now in terms of you trying to figure out a thoughts weak in the mind. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? I know. I thought that earlier because I heard it with the with the girl before me. I was like, oh well. So it's very similar too, you know. You know, overthinking it, it's like your mind starts to lose track. It's just like having too many colors in a painting, right? You lose track of actually what's happening. Like yeah. If, you, if you're overthinking it and you're thinking, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And then you kind of like listening and doing research or gathering all this information and stuff. And it's like, you're actually, um, it, it could, it could lead you to paralysis. It has. I was ready at the beginning and I, I thought, well, I know what I'll do. 
And then as I listen to more, I'm like, oh, I got to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. And I've waited yeah. so long that I'm like, wow, I'm actually waiting longer than I would have if I ha hadn't listened, maybe, you know? Yeah. You know, like I, uh, there's a thing I say, you know, as an artist and as an individual and whatnot, I like to say, like, say less, say yes. Just, just, just do, do it. it. Just do the thing, no matter what it is, when it is, there's not a perfect time. There's not a perfect. And this first one is just to get your foot, your, you, you dip your toe in. You yeah. can always delete it if you don't like the talk. So it doesn't even have to be part of your history. It could just mm. be something that you do. And oh, like, you know, I think my intro one, I think I deleted because I was just like, oh, I screwed that up. And and like I was on during the beta and I don't even think anybody came on for that talk, you know, like so. And the nice thing is, is there's a, there's so many people on right now that if you just came up with a, a title like, you know, like even if it was I'm a cheeseman, what are you? <laughs> like, right. You know, like even that would just invite people up and it would drive the conversation forward somewhere. and then yeah somewhere and and then you would figure out what what was being talked about and that could drive your stuff you know and that True. moves us into this next line which is desires wither the heart and i think that like when you have this desire to have a result at all uh -huh. that what ends up happening is it withers your ability to really move yeah move forward to really like your your heart is in it that's why you joined and then right. all of a sudden you start listening to other people and you start how do i stand out how do i do this how do I, all of these desires start to wither your wither that 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 love you had that started because the thoughts that you have are weakening your mind and now now there's like deterioration happening rather than growth rather than you kind of being like yes i am going to step into this you have gathered and gathered and gathered and it's brought and it's possible that it has it has infringed or or started to get you living under its influence rather than you influencing us which you have the power to do yeah i mean i've definitely gained a lot of wisdom i'll say that i just haven't been able to put myself in a place to put myself out there and do my own talk it's like i'm just gathering information rather than putting any out there and here's the here's the caveat the, here's the beautiful thing that that this moves into then the master observes the world but trusts his inner vision and that's where that's where you're headed right you're headed to a place where you could trust your inner vision Right now, you don't trust it. And you're, you're questioning, like, what, what are the thoughts? What are the desires? What are the flavors? What are the colors? What are the sounds that I have to produce? But when you trust your inner vision, that's when you kind of own that master space within the Tao. Like, you're able to kind of just take a deep breath and dive in to who you are. Well, thank you. I've always liked listening to you. And now I like hearing you. That's <laughs> even more. Yeah, and this ends, this ends with these last two lines. He allows things to come and go. His heart mm -hmm. is as open as the sky. And for that, you know, like you allow yeah. things to come and go. Like you allow yourself to do a talk and let it end and then go about your life and then do another talk or join a talk, let yeah. it end and go about your life. You know, Dr. Rao, I'm sure you've heard of him and you've, oh, yeah. you've heard him speak. Dr. Rao talks and, and I talk a lot about this idea of you know, letting things let come, it, and let them go. Yeah, let it come, and then once that's over, it's gone, and there's no reason to keep your mind on it. There's right. no reason to keep harping over it. There's and and you know what? I would challenge you to just do a talk, like maybe even right now when you get off of this. Like once you once you I am your time is up, just <laughs> start a talk because it doesn't because there are people here, and I would encourage anybody that's listening right now. Um, if you don't want to pick a number on the Dow, would check out uh, check out Rachel's talk when she when she starts because she is new and we want to we want to support like what she has to say and and continue to uh build this community thank you so much thank you absolutely really you have a appreciate wonderful it. day yeah you absolutely too. thank you thank you for thank you for coming up and uh and trusting me to uh speak with you oh definitely and we'll talk again i'll come we to one of your other days all right bye
I got a good one. Okay. All right, we're going to bring Will up. Rachel, thank you so much. Go start a talk. Yes. How you doing? Hello, hello. Hello. You know, I saw, <laughs> I saw uh, your picture come up the other day on someone else's talk, and it didn't say Will. Do you know about this? I don't know what this is. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's maybe a problem. Yeah, I was, uh, uh, so I don't know. I don't know what that was. I, it was, it was, it was, I, I, I think that's what I saw. Like, mm. of course, I can't go back in time. Um, but I, I, I did see it and I was just like, well, is, is that, is that you? And I was like, oh, I think it is, but it wasn't. So I was, I was, yeah, I don't know. I was, was that here I, on Clubhouse? It was, uh, it was here. It was here. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I just like was, was hallucinating. I don't know. <laughs> but, but, um, but yeah, I just thought maybe, uh, I, and, and it might, you know, I mean, maybe it just looked like you, I don't know, but it looked really like you. Like I was like, the image was, was there and it, it sounded like you as well, but maybe I, like I said, maybe I was hallucinating. Maybe it was a dream. Who knows? Like, <laughs> it could have been. It could have been anything. I don't know. Um, but well, yeah, I hope it, was... it. I hope it wasn't anything like that. Because well, yeah, like, yeah. If, if it's a dream, it's a different story. A dream is a dream, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But but I, I mean, hope, you know, uh... it was, it was like like whatever. We're not gonna we're not gonna harp on it because I see you and it says Will and all is well. Like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so That's funny. we're together here. Yeah. Um, not you know like there's there's glitches in this in this app and stuff like we know that it's a, it's a small company but um but yeah so uh you got a number for me did you I do <clears throat> so I've um, I'm 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 not picking these numbers I've already done eighteen I've already done thirty six I've already done twenty three so what number different am I going to choose this time um <clears throat> let's go with thirteen. Mm -hmm. 13. Wonderful. Lucky number 13. Success is as dangerous as failure and hope is as hollow as fear. What does it mean that success is as dangerous as failure? Whether you're going up the ladder or down it, your position is shaky. When you stand with your two feet on the ground, you always keep your balance. What does it mean that hope is as hollow as fear? Hope and fear are both phantoms. They arise from thinking of the self. When we don't see the self as self, what do we have to fear? See the world as yourself. Have faith in the way things are. Love the world as yourself, and you can care for all things. Interesting. What do you think? I mean, I mean yeah, I mean, success is... Success is, people do get caught up in their success and, oh, I could never, you know, drop down from that status or, or whatever. It's funny though, because there's, it, 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 there's the other part of it, which is with enough success in other people's minds, the person who is successful almost gets elevated by another notch or two or three because everybody else sort of elevates the platform that they're on if that makes any sense yeah it's like i i like to consider that well i mean maybe i would consider that like benefit of the doubt right when you have a platform no, it's deeper than that i mean from what i'm from what i'm saying from my okay. my, my perspective okay. it's deeper than that it's not benefit of the doubt it's it's like, you know, when, when some people can be, um, um, almost like, uh, self, not self-sabotage, but like other people, let's say a young, a young entrepreneur and the young entrepreneur shares that they're going to be an entrepreneur. And everyone's like, no, you won't be able to succeed or, or like, you know, like, like people who doubt. Okay. But not better for that, but they just doubt. Okay. And so <clears throat> there's this amplified doubt that exists around that person. That's why when you change your network, it helps in terms of mindset. And so if you're around a group of people who not only respect you, but hold you in the regard on whatever level you are, right? And you have that success, they may elevate you 
one or two or three steps higher or one or two or three, three, I don't know, inches or feet or whatever higher because there is this effect psychologically of sort of, oh, they're great at business or, oh, they're whatever. So that people view them as higher as they are. It's almost the same way as people view those who are successful now without viewing the prior failures from, from before. In other words, it's almost like narrow vision. And then we amp up whatever we see now, if that, that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So anyway, so that's the success piece. Do me a favor. Can you read it again for me? Absolutely. So success is as dangerous as failure. Hope is as hollow as fear. What does it okay. mean that success is as dangerous as failure? Whether you go up the ladder or down it, your position is shaky. When you stand with both of your feet on the ground, you will always keep your balance. What does it mean that hope is as hollow as fear? Hope and fear are both phantoms that arise from thinking of the self. When we don't see self as self, we can, uh, we do have, what do we have to fear? Pardon. See the world as yourself, have faith in the way things are, love the world as yourself, and then you can care for all things. See, I think that, you know, when we bring this, this end, like the, 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 see the world as yourself and have mm-hmm. faith in the way things are, mm-hmm. and then uh, love the world as yourself and you can care for all things. We bring that back to the beginning of success is as dangerous as, as failure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. see the world as yourself and have faith in the way things are success and failure. Like they're both the same thing, right? Like they don't, they, they, they are what they are. They're not good or bad intrinsically because failure, you know, actually today I put out an email, um, that said, um, that was a quote from Ken Bain, which stated, uh, we provide more punishment for people who try and have not yet succeeded than we do for people who don't try at all. And the idea is like, yes, you want to try. We want you to try and you can have faith in the way things are, whether it's successful or a failure. And sometimes we lean on success because it looks a certain way, but success and and failure are both dangerous. So I have a slightly different take. I don't think success and failure are one and the same because the energy behind it, and I'm not an energy person at all. Let me make sure I'm very <laughs> clear about this. But the energy behind it, in the very least, on a mindset level, okay? Meaning. Well, that starts with labeling it. So success and failure intrinsically aren't anything until you label it. But that's not true because there's meaning to words. You can't, you can't see. Huh, so you, you can't say they're nothing and. Success means one thing. Failure means something else. If they both meant the same thing, if they both were, were one and the same, then, then we can say blah and blah, mm-hmm. not success and failure. Mm-hmm. You don't agree? No, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. But, but that's, but that's, that's fine. Um, I mean, I don't agree only because like, uh, once again, like it is like both success, you know, success and failure, depending on like, you could look at, it depends on who you are. And because like the, uh, like if we look at the, you know, the, the war in Ukraine, like one person might be experiencing success, another person might be experiencing failure and the same thing is happening. It's just from their perspective that that thing is existing. Correct. But at the same time, that experience has energy attached to it and a perspective attached to it. It's one, not one and the same. It's the same occurrence with different effects. And the effect is the point. The emotional effect is the point. Success has an emotional effect and an emotional backing to it. Failure has a success and emotional backing to it. So the Ukrainians, I hate to do this, but the Ukrainians obviously have the right now the failing piece. I wish they didn't. And the the Russians have the well, perhaps fake success piece, but we can debate that another time. Um, and there, therefore, there's an emotional piece to it. There's a viewpoint piece to it. Words have meaning, and that meaning has that energy, and that energy is from from a, from a perspective. That's what I'm getting at. I mean, I may not be saying this very clearly, 
but no, but but I understand what you're saying, and it is, and and this is where this is where this last section, where it's like, see the world as yourself, have faith in the way things are, exactly, without without um, the label of the success or failure, the label, it, and I I I see this verse as saying, hey, what we're looking at in terms of the label is right hope is as hollow as fear these things are these things are not as disparate when you can see it as yourself right love the world as yourself then you can care for all things you can care for them without the without because the emotional the emotional ties we have to success and failure is it is centered on this idea that like success is a thing and failure is a thing it's it's by it's by separating the two by experience right Ra and by by judgment of the experience so i understand what you're saying as two peas in a pod i hate i, I really don't like using um cliches and stuff but it's almost like two 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 slices of a pie or two peas in a pod it's almost like the overall arching thing is love or the overall arching thing is energy in and of itself and within that it's different forms of energy different forms of things and so well you well, that's what i understand you're saying where it, it's they're one and the same because it's all from the actual energy itself um the same source of energy per se for perhaps well, it's not, you know, like energy, like you're right, words have energy. And when you decide on a word, when you decide that X is success and X is failure, then we, we, we take a side and, and we, and we ignite that energy, you know, like within we, we, and, and, you know, maybe energy might not be the right word, but emotion could be right. Because there is an emotional tie to success and failure. And, and when you succeed, you are emotionally moved. And when you, when you have, you know, when you, when you perceive success and success is, uh, is something that comes and goes, right? Like what does success mean? You could be succeeding at one minute and failing at the next. And, and, uh, you could be failing at one minute and succeeding at the next. But emotion is energy in motion. Well, that's cute. Yeah. No, I get that. Yeah. Not cute. I mean, go look at a whole slew of people, whether yeah, we're talking yeah, about, no, I, I mean, um, I get um, that. Ri thinking, uh, not thinking grow rich, uh, rich dad, poor dad by whatever his name is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then Tony Robbins and others. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I get that energy in motion. I, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I, I do, I do hear that. Um, uh, but I think like energy doesn't have emotion attached to it. Energy doesn't care about emotion. Energy is a neutral thing. And so, you know. Correct. Perspective matters. I agree with you on that. Right. Well, yeah. People can be right and rub each other the wrong way because it's their perspectives. For example, I, I use the paradigm. Um, and I'll be super quick about this. Have a piece of, take out a piece of paper, create a, a square in between the corners of each square put um, a little uh, a circle or a door, whatever, whatever you, want to, you want to call it. Basically, in between each of those of those corners, you put a door. And inside this room that we've now created in, in two-dimensional format, you put whatever you want in there. You put furniture, you can put chairs, you can whatever that you want. Whichever door you're entering from is a different, different angle of the same thing. And that angle influences how we view everything, which is, is essentially bias as well, which is how, how I view bias. And how I also view perspective and everything else. So basically what we're talking about now is, uh, or not not now, over the whole conversation basically, is on um, how to interpret or perspective of success and failure, which can be parsed out to anything else. How to interpret, you know, the positive and negative, or no, that's that's wrong. The 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 one and the coupled with other word. Like peanut butter and jelly, for example, because you mentioned success and failure, I think they weren't. I think they're they're opposites if you want to put it that way. Peanut butter and jelly are like coupled words that go together, basically. That could be either opposite or coupled. That provides that perspective, that that differentiation, and that's what we're talking about. But uh, mm. anyway, 
<laughs> well, no, <laughs> I mean, you know, like if, if, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I hear that. I hear that. And, um, you know, I think that it, please, if, if you want to come back up, uh, be my guest. Um, so as we go through this and, and like, I, I understand that you don't necessarily agree with this. Uh, the success is as dangerous as failure. Hope is as hollow as fear. Um, maybe, maybe I'm just understanding it a little differently. So like I said, uh, if you wanted to uh, come back up and land this, I want I want to, I want to be able to allow you to do that. Um, what does it mean that success is as dangerous as failure? Whether you go up or down the ladder, you are, uh, you're always shaky. And I think that is where we start to, uh, when you have a desire to succeed or when you have a desire, when you have a desire to see succeed, you are, you are on the ladder. And I think Correct. What we're saying is like standing with both of your feet on the ground in neutrality. Is, Correct. Uh, yeah. No, I agree with you. I agree with those sentences. Success can, can be as, as fragile as failure and vice versa. Failure can be as fragile as success. And the only thing that matters is standing on your own two feet and and having one's moral compass and one's moral footing and all that good stuff um, because that's what matters the most and part of that footing part of that solid ground if you want to put it that way includes the, your network of people your friends your family you know anyone who's around you is included in that including mindset and other and, and, and emotion and affirmations and you know every piece that makes up who a person is that's ultimately what will drive through the process of or leading to failure or success. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I hear that. Yeah, yeah. No, I, and and I think that that's a that's a great way of looking at this that this verse and, you know, when we and you know, and as this wraps up where it says, you know, the world, see the world as yourself, have faith in the way things are, love the world as yourself, and then you can care for all things. How does that wrap up for you? Say it one more time. I got lost on a tangent, yeah. tangential yeah. thought. I mm -hmm. apologize. Mm -hmm. See the world as yourself, have yeah. faith in the way things are, love the world as yourself, then you can care for all things. Yes. Love the world as oneself. In other words, so I, I do something a little bit different than that, but I agree with that. And so <clears throat> what, what it's saying to me is like most people, almost all people, we have to internalize what is around us, our environment to then be able to care for it, serve it. If we're an entrepreneur, um, you know, or serve whoever we serve, if we're working for somebody else. There's a, then there's the element of service is, is because we're able to see the environment and then interpret it and then provide that love and care and so on and so forth. So, yeah, no, I, I agree with that hundred percent. That's just how my, my take on what you, what you basically said. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's that last sentence I forget now. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, you know, it, it, it is what you just covered. Like love the world as yourself. Then you can care for all things. There we go. Yeah. No, cause you have to internalize it. You have to appreciate it. You have to, it's almost like it's hard to appreciate someone almost like dating or going, no, better, better, better example, going to school. You're, you're, uh, you're a bunch of, you bunch of kindergarten kids in the school, in, in, in school, you're all getting to know each other. And after time you've gone through five or six years with the same children. Now, now older children, and maybe you go to the same high school together and you remain friends with them. That appreciation is different than when you first first met them back in kindergarten if that makes any sense i think that, that that's how i interpret it in terms of you have to have that appreciation and once you have the appreciation when you grow as a person even if it's for a day you've grown with them they've grown with within you as well um and you're able to appreciate them better and once that you have that appreciation you're able to to either assist or better assist or better serve i should say yeah yeah no i can hear that i can hear that that's cool, beautiful cool. i don't yeah. want to take much time thank you for bringing all right Absolutely. Thank we'll you be for in touch. bringing that I'm in. sending we, an email we now, actually. Be. We shall be. All right, we're bringing Graciela on. Um, my buddy. Oh, my gosh. Let me breathe deep. Let's, yeah, let's you and I take a deep, deep breath. Let's connect, because it's always great to just connect with you and just, like, to be <sighs> present here. Yes. Oh, there you are. Look at that. <sighs> 
Look at yes. you. I, I love I love connecting, connecting energetically <laughs> and taking that taking that time to just like hmm, so nice. You know, like I was talking to someone, I was talking to a client the other day and I was like, you know, like when you love somebody so much that like even and this might sound crude, even like having sex isn't enough. Right. Like you just you just want to be in their body like completely. And and she had described this idea like she had this idea of unzipping somebody and then getting inside of them and zipping herself up in them. And it's like I love that feeling. And I have that with so many people in my life where I just like it's like it's not it's not a sexual thing at all. But it's it's this idea of just like, oh, I just want to I just I just want to like literally energetically merge and you're somebody that you and julie and there's so many people and gina Mm -hmm. and there's so many people on here that i'm i'm i've I've only mentioned women but that's not the case d grant is another dr rao is another right like right right, right. um but but you know like just being able to merge in in this kind of energetic heart space yes because we are balls of epic energy yes epic epic Oh my gosh, you're such a hero for me. Thank you. Thank you, Martin oh. John. Those words were so kind. And you know what? I completely relate. There's there's a certain aspect of um, um, asexuality, mm-hmm. if, if we want to label to it. That, to like, that, to that experience. Right. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, yeah. and to growing up being, you know, uh, energy workers or healers and whatnot. It's like, it's it's about your soul and your soul knows better than, than those just two physical worldly limitations. Yeah. And you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm an animal as well. So I do like the mm-hmm. sex stuff, but you know, ultimately like, of that's course. not what I'm talking about here. Like, no, yeah, I like, get it. I yeah. get it. We're talking and, about and, energy though. Yeah. But when, you know, and when, you know, like whatever, like we're gonna, we can move on from this, but, of but course. maybe, maybe we'll do, maybe we'll do it. it. Maybe we'll do a talk on that sometime. No, but, I um, get it. I get it. Yeah. And I appreciate breathing deep and being reminded of that. You know, I'm still recovering from that massage on Friday. Yesterday mm. I couldn't even move my neck. Oh, yeah, but now today it's all better. Um, so I'm just happy that you're here. Normal hours. Yeah, good times. <laughs> good times. Good times. I'm excited. Prime time hours. In I know. The morning I after the is, sun yeah, is up. Not not 4 a.m. <laughs> right. So, uh, yes. so 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 tell me, what's your number today? Um, let's do 37. 37. Off we go. I don't think I've done that one. Well, if, if this sounds familiar, we can always jump to a different uh, okay. trend. So, the Tao never does anything, yet through it, all things are done. If powerful men and women could center themselves in it, the whole world would be transformed by itself in its mm. natural rhythms. People would be content with their simple, everyday lives in harmony and free mm. of desire. When there is no desire, all things are at peace. Oh, that's no, we have never discussed this, first of all. Second of all, the very beginning makes me feel so validated about what we're doing here, what I'm doing with my work and with the people that I'm reaching out, because that's what I want. I want everyone to be at that level of harmony, unity, one mind, one heart, right? One Mm -hmm. heart, let's get together and be all right you know and so (laughs) and then in the end oh what a great reminder you and i were talking about desires yesterday do you remember that Mm -hmm. yes and also great reminder uh right before this full moon because it's really about the desires of our heart. I mean, my Venus is in, Vir- in Virgo and, you know, Venus is about passions and emotions and the desires of your heart, right? And so the fact that the full moon is falling on Virgo, you know, merges with that type of birth chart energy of mine. And so this particular full moon is about our heart's desires, what we want to create, what we're trying to accomplish, the goals that we're working towards, right? Like, I'm not sure about the listeners, but me and my clients, we have to have specific goals that are measurable and all this crap, right? And so your reminder last night was very timely mm-hmm. about how, you know, uh, holding on to a desire is just is carrying extra weight as opposed to letting go and being open. Um, and so this is a great reminder. I'm glad I, you know, I knew I, I had that number in my head for a reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you want to we... get to it line by line? 
Yeah, as we start this off, it says, the Tao never does anything, yet through it all things are done. You know, I was, there's so many times in my life where I'm like, where you, and I heard someone talk about this, I think it was last night on, on Instagram Live, somebody that, I'm, that I follow, and they were talking about the idea that like, they don't have plans anymore. And I haven't had plans in mm -hmm. such a long time. You know, I don't, I don't know, I don't know when the last time I had plans. I mean, I got plans to go on the on the dark retreat, so that's going to be sort of like compartmentalized into a section of my year. But I haven't really like had like, oh, I got all of these plans. They're, they 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 right, do right. come up for me, but right. they're not like I'm not living by a schedule right now, and I haven't right. in quite some time. And and this this the Tao never does anything yet. Yet through it, all things are done. Things are happening but I'm not doing anything. Yeah. I mean, you know, like, yeah, go on, please. No, I, I just wanted to say like for my own experience, and I think I discussed with you those, those test results that kind of put me in the spectrum and we're still dealing with all of that medical stuff right on this mm -hmm, end. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I, I just, I have to say, I could not be as successful and I don't want to get into what success means because everybody right. has a different meaning and, and it is what it is. And if I told you right now that I think success means nothing to me, well, there you go. It has no meaning right now as it right. falls in my context. Right. Um, but I couldn't do what I do and be who I am if I didn't have structure. I mean, I, and I say this all the time. It's like, it's part of that authenticity piece of like, when my child drops his nap, because he still naps every day, right? And I keep being told, oh, and when he turns three, he's going to drop the nap and whatever. Well, when he does, I might take a few days to recover because my whole life the rhythm for the past three years has been centered around the fact that he is sleep trained. He goes right. to nap at a specific time and he goes to bed at a specific time. And when he is napping is when I get all of this done because he only goes to the sitter once a week. Right. Like the rest of the time, this, this child Fridays. is attached to my hip. Yeah. Fridays. And this Friday she's not available because it's spring break. She's like, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I can't watch him this week because my whole family is at home and we have plans. And I'm like, well, I'm, my whole family is at home and we're all working. So thanks for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like my, my stepkids are teenagers, but they have jobs too. And so we're a very productive family and we're always, you know, working to, to live the way we want. And so, yeah, it's, but I do appreciate though, because I do know the product of stillness. Yeah. And, you know, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't, that also doesn't mean that, you know, like when I say that, it doesn't mean that I don't have my routines every day and stuff. It's just, right, right. you know, they, they can, they, 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 you know, like it's a, it's a thing where it's like, you know, when we are caught up in doing, we're caught up in, we can get caught up in, in all sorts of things that don't have the depth of fulfillment. Right. Let me, let me step you know, away from this. And I'm not saying that on. you are right. Like, I'm just saying that like, that's a, you know, when, when you get caught up in doing, you're like, okay, check, 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 mm -hmm, checked all mm -hmm, the boxes. Mm -hmm, now it's time mm -hmm. for bed. And it's like, okay, well, you know, and this is where yeah. like, if powerful men and women can center themselves in it, the whole world would be transformed by itself in its natural rhythms and powerful. It's like, you're powerful because you have a child. And so your influence, you're powerful because you have a voice, you're powerful because you exist and everybody right. has power. And if everybody could, could center themselves in the Tao, which doesn't do anything, it just, it shows up. And when I say don't do anything, that doesn't mean you're not actively doing things. Of course you are, you know, right. like that's right. what life is. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So good. And, and to remember just to center yesterday last night while you were on someone else's live and not mine um <laughs> <laughs> the conversation here started being about you know i just wanted to casually invite people to share what they're doing here on wisdom i was gonna read actually but at night it's very hard to read because there's a lot of people on and i want to have a conversation yeah. so don't worry chapter four is coming today but 
I opened it up for people to just introduce themselves and it morphed into social media presence and how present you are. For I did. I, I heard that. And that's why I kind of, I was just like, Oh, I can go on. And then I started talking and then there was like this kind of focus on social media. And I was like, Oh, I don't have much to say on this topic. Ah, you can so, say anything. You don't need to pay attention to my title. You're welcome to come up and say hello and I'll change the title just for you, Martin John. Just, oh, buddy. <laughs> yes, because it's I did I did I did I did like just randomly pick up and I was just like, "Oh, Graciela's on." And I went and I listened for like just a minute and then I was like, "Oh, this isn't going to be for me." And, oh. and then you were bringing someone up and so I was just like, "Okay, I think I think I think, and then I think I went on to someone else's talk after that. But no, but yeah, I always I was. Talk. I, I yeah, did, there's that I impatience piece. It's like, I oh, she's talking about someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Yeah. But what I was going to say is, Dr. Rao joined us, and yes. Dr. Rao is very consistent with his social media presence. He is there live every single morning. He is here. You know, yep. if you if you are here spending time talking, this is your social media presence as well. Except yep. here, we're calling it social audio presence. Oh, yeah, because absolutely. it's audio. But um, he was talking about that authenticity piece of just being. If we could all just really be, that would be great. Yeah. And and there's so many ways to look at it, of course. And also, I wanted to personally thank you because I was doing an intuitive reading this week and the Tao Te Ching came up and I know what I know from that because of you. Oh. So I was so grateful that I was able to say, yes, I know what you're talking about. What do you, yeah, let's, let's talk about this. Let's dive in. Yeah. Yes. And so that was really great. And, and I sent you my love. I, I hope you felt it. Oh, and I then... feel you love so often. <laughs> Good. And I hope you felt mine when I, when I slid through your room yesterday. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. And then, um, oh my gosh, with Dr. Rao, it was beautiful. Go back and listen to it. He was playing music for me. Mm, He's like, let's I... just enjoy this oh. moment. And he talks yes. about the instruments and uh, the musical history of the of the musician from India, and uh, it's just to just be is essential. Um, one of my first ever favorite quotes is from a novel by Nicholas Sparks, and it's "Silence is pure. Silence is holy. It draws people together because only those who are truly comfortable with each other can sit without speaking." Yeah, and so you know the people in your family, the people in your life, your friendships—is it all a chatter, or can you just be? You know, when people when people fill space, and sometimes I'm just like, hmm, let's just stop. You know, like when yeah. I get on the phone with somebody and they just start going and going and going like a mile a minute, I'm like, whoa, right. let's let's take a step back and take a breath. Mm. You know, and it's not it's not trying to tell them that they don't know what they're talking about or be argumentative or anything i'm just like hey i love you i want you here not not all that chatter let's be here uh -huh. together you know yes yes and that's why it's so important to breathe yeah and to get back to your body yes i keep saying every single one of my coaching sessions starts with breath work and ends with breath work that's the little you know bubble that i like to enclose the coaching in because it brings it brings us back from checking in and all the excitement. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy. It's finally here. We're talking again. It's been two right. weeks. Oh my gosh, I love you. How has it been? And then, okay, how yeah. can I help you today? Right, yeah. You know, how can I serve you? What do you need? Let's talk. And and breathing and coming back to center is so important. And I'm so appreciative for you, Dr. Rao, D, all of the people here who just remind us of that because you know we're here talking all day. We need to remember to breathe. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Martin John. Absolutely. And this one mm -hmm. wraps up with this. People would be content with their simple everyday lives in harmony and free from desire. And I think when we start with that breath, we can be here present, free from wanting anything from this moment. We can just be here. When That's there right. Is no all I want to be is hanging out with you and, and on wisdom. Yeah, when when there is no desire, all things are at peace. We can just be here, our hearts open and in peace. Mm, I love that. What a beautiful way to continue my day. Thank you so much, Martin John. Absolutely. And Bye. good luck I'll on be Friday. Listening. Yes, of course. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, so great. So 
we had Energy Lady and Rachel. Julie came on first. Will came on. We chatted. And Graciela. Oh, we have somebody. Oh, Empress is coming up. Such a wonderful guest. How are you Happy doing, dear? Chicago morning to you. Yes, it is a beautiful, you know, we're moving into the spring in Chicago and you know that is <laughs> gorgeous. Like, oh man, <laughs> everything, everything is melting and everything smells so rich and lush. Ugh. I know, and I miss the flowers on Michigan Avenue. Oh, oh yeah. you know, nobody does it like Chi Town. No, we don't. And and we 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 love our spring. We love our autumn. Yes. You know, like come come October, there are there are pumpkins everywhere. You know, like yeah. we we just okay. we we it's it is it is a beautiful time. Like these, you know, and and the spring with the lake and like the waves get really high, and you get to you just yeah. get to you get if you if you can make it down to the lakefront, you can just sit there and be in the in the awesome power of Lake Michigan. You know, one of the you know uh, one of the great lakes, one of the largest lakes in the world. Like it is, it is special. Yeah, I I went every morning. It was it was yes. part of my sacred you know sacred prayer and whatnot. Yeah. But I I have a number today. Give it to me. Sixty nine. 69. Off we go. The generals have a saying, rather than make the first move, it is better to wait and see. Rather than advance an inch, it is better to retreat a yard. This is called going forward without advancing, pushing back without using weapons. There is no greater misfortune than, to under, than underestimating your enemy. Underestimating your enemy means thinking that he is evil. Thus, you destroy your three treasures and become an enemy yourself. When two great forces oppose each other, the victory will go to the one that knows how to yield. I love it because that is exactly who I am. That is definitely a philosophy of mine, um, which I would probably add with that silence, because silence is very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. And um, so being able, so we do read that part again, being able to move, not making the first move. Yeah, rather yeah, than advancing. make the first move, it is better to wait and see. Right. Right. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, so this starts with this 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 line essentially. The generals have a saying, rather than make the first move, it's better to wait and see. You know, have you ever heard of the phrase first thought wrong? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a beautiful way of looking at this. You know, like so often we we jump to a conclusion and that conclusion is so wrong. <laughs> you yeah. Know, when you have that, when you have that first thought wrong, when it's like, oh, they're saying this because of this and da da da, and it's actually it's because you didn't eat lunch yet. So shut your face. You know, it's like you're upset because we're jumping to a conclusion. Right. I just had that experience on Friday, and it concluded today. Mm. And uh, my car um, uh, had wasn't wasn't working. So you know, with this new technology and whatnot, and I got in the car, I noticed when I hit the key fob, that my doors didn't open. I'm like, well, what's going on? I just drove the car two days ago, right? So, yeah. so then uh, after going through all of that, and then I found out yesterday it was my battery. I said, oh, no, Friday, Spirit said, don't take the car in, just wait. Yeah. So I did. So I, I had the car towed yesterday. And so they said, well, your battery failed. I said, okay, well, guess what? It's on you. Yeah. So the car dealer said, what do you mean it's on you? I said, yeah, because my battery is less than a year old. So when you start spending $600 for a battery, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know, this, this one's for you, okay? Yeah. So, so in the waiting, being still and being silent, not making a decision, listening to what someone is saying to you, and processing that so that you can then come back with a reasonable uh, response uh, that will 
be in either your benefit or the other person's benefit because sometimes right. everything is not always you know uh, uh acclimate for ourselves but I would say I definitely do that. I was trying to get on last week and you were just so busy. <laughs> uh, that, that can happen. That can happen. So, so I said, well, I'm going to hold that number. And I love it because we always, need, although I am familiar, we continuously need to be reminded. We all do. And if we, yeah. if we, if we find ourselves in a space, you know, like there is, there's, there's, a, there's one Tao that's like, no, and that's what I was reading today from 71. It was mine mm -hmm. that I read, which is like, knowing is a disease. Mm -hmm. Getting yourself, get, understanding that you're sick is, is where we have to be. You don't know. And, and if we can just get okay with saying, I don't know, it's mm -hmm. all right. You know, it's like okay. we, we think that it's better, you know, like I was, I was talking about my nephew, seven years old, motherfucker knows everything. I'm just like, dude, you don't know nothing. Like, I don't understand where you're coming off thinking you know some shit. Like, I know less than you, according to you, brother. You know, and, and so many of us wanna wanna prove, wanna 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 plant our flag in the ground and prove something, you know. Right. And the Tao also states, you know, the men who need to prove their point aren't wise. Wise men don't need to prove their point. Right. Right. Rather, but see, then, these these are conditions of the world that have taught us these things. So we yeah, have we, have, we have learned, we have, we have, we have learned how to do this really good. We have learned mm -hmm. how we have learned that there is benefit in knowing, not being, not yielding. And that's what this is all about, right? This 69 is all about yielding rather mm -hmm. than advance an inch. It's better mm -hmm. to retreat a yard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. I love it because uh, that's what I did Friday, carried it into today. I get my free battery today. <laughs> they have to replace it. Yeah. You know. But if I had responded Friday, I probably would have said, well, just go ahead and put another battery in. But that's no, right. My spirit you would have been no. under pressure. Right. Right. Yeah. Just you would have you would have you would have had a time constraint. They would have been on a Friday wanting to go home. Everybody right. would have been pushing you, like, no, you gotta do this, da da da. They just wanna make the sale, whatever. And now on Monday you're like, Look, I've dealt without my car for three days. I'm gonna right. come in. I'm just gonna say, Look, I ain't hurting. This is on you, son. Like Okay. <laughs> all yeah. of a sudden the right answer presents itself. And right. this is, this is, this is go, goes into the next line. This is called going forward without advancing, pushing back without using weapons. I love it. You, you moved forward on Friday without advancing. Mm -hmm. And then when they said, oh, this and that, you didn't have to say, or you didn't have to, you didn't have to be argumentative or anything. You're just like, this is the way it is. Right. Without weapons, just kind of presenting the facts. Right. Right. That's great. I love the message for today. It was meant for today, yeah. not last week, because it's relevant you had to live it. in this moment. I had to live it. That's right. Because you might not have been able to see it had you been in the middle of it. Absolutely. I love Because, you know, it. once once our car doesn't start, everything, like it's kind of oh, like when we think, stops. <laughs> once we, when, we, when we think we've lost our phone, oh my God we get those those blinders go up and we can't see nothing we can't okay. even see our phone <laughs> <laughs> okay the telephone and your door keys and your that's car right. those yep, are right. serious triggers in our life okay <laughs> when i was when i was a smoker i would right. i would have to check all of my gear as i left the house do i got my tobacco do i got my phone do i got my lighter do i got my papers do i got this do i got that and I, at some point i was just like i hate that I can't just leave the house. Yeah. You know, and I was telling someone not long ago, what a freedom it is to leave the house with just your key. Mm -hmm. You know, like you leave the house and all you have is your key mm -hmm. and you go for a walk. There's like this like release yeah. in your yeah. chest. It's like, I don't need nothing. Yeah. You know, and there are times when, you know, like you live with people, you don't even need your key. If you know they're right. gonna be home, you just walk outside, not even with your ID, just like right. I am free out here in the world. Right. Like one of the things I, a couple of things I've done. One, when I left the city of Chicago, um, I uh, stopped wearing a watch. Yeah. I'm not controlled by time. Yeah. 
And the second thing was there was a period in my life where one of my best girlfriends and I, we used to travel with only the clothes on our back. Nice. Nothing. And, you know, of course, our wallets, we didn't take big purses, anything like that, strap over purses. We only traveled with clothes on our back. And we used to buy new clothes when we got to another city, left those clothes in the hotel. It was wonderful. Because That's it was beautiful. Because the process of being totally free, not having to carry luggage, not having to stand in line and wait for luggage. You know, it was just a totally free thing. And we did that for about a year, you know, when we were traveling that year. Yeah. And yeah. it was a, just a, a very free um, experience. And I loved it. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. You know, and as we as we kind of come back to the Tao here, which says, like, there is no greater misfortune than underestimating your enemy. Underestimating your enemy means thinking that he is evil. Thus, you destroy your three treasures and become an enemy yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm intrigued at this as to this three treasures business. And I want to I want to kind of look at something to see if there is. No, there's no reference to it um, anywhere else. So I don't know, like, you know, like you destroy your three treasures. And, and as we look at, let me get to it really quick. Um, rather than make the first move, it is better to wait and see. Rather than advance an inch, it's better to retreat. Thus going forward, this is called going forward without advancing, pushing back without weapons. Huh. You know, like mm. I, I'm always, I'm always, you know, as someone coming out of addiction and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff, like the idea that we think anybody is evil is so mm-hmm. heart, heart wrenching to me. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, even, even Putin, like thinking he is evil is, is what this is talking about. Underestimating your enemy means thinking he is evil. Thus you right. destroy your three treasures and become an enemy yourself. I don't know what the three treasures are referencing. It's probably like faith and, and calm and what have you, but, um, but well, it's you know, interesting. They don't give you that information. Yeah. I don't know. Like I, I, I'll do some research on that because I don't, I don't get this number very often. So I think okay. I've only read it maybe once before on this. I mean, I've read it before, but I haven't done a lot of research and maybe I have, and, and maybe I just have to remind myself what the three treasures are. Um, but uh, it, there is another line that says to have an enemy is to be an enemy. And that's the thing that is really important is like, you know, Jesus in, in, in the Bible, it says, you know, love your, uh, not love your neighbor, but like, it says something about like, love thy, love thy enemy. Right. And mm-hmm. if you love thy enemy, they are not an enemy. Right. You know, it is about getting rid of the idea that there is an enemy. Right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But again, we've been conditioned. So that's yes. where that's where the conflict and the chaos come in, because we uh, we have a have taken on the societal standards of the world and we have spiritual amnesia on who we truly are and trying to get back to who we are. So, um, you know, and and it's all about, and people say, well, it's so hard. It's all, it's just making a decision and decisions are hard hard to make. Huh? Hard is just, hard is just a label. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. Make a decision. You know, because if you value you, then you value the decision for you regarding you, you know. So uh, but we people are, you know, the world is has gotten into this comfort zone. But um, I think we've all been awakened from 2020 because it was more than uh, the coronavirus, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. And we were awakened and uh, people just got kind of, you know, shook off the planet. (laughs) What do you mean? Things are not going back to normal. I want it to go back. It will never go back. So No, there's never (laughs) been a normal. There's never been a normal. You've just been comfortable. (laughs) Right. That's it. You've just been comfortable. Absolutely. Yeah. This one wraps up with this really nice three lines that state when two great forces oppose each other and two great forces are to anything that have the Tao in it and everything does. So when two great forces oppose each other, the victory will go to the one who knows how to yield. Mm. 
Love it. I'm yielding. Yield. Oh man, yielding is is so glorious and it's such a beautiful feminine trait, but everyone has access to the ability to yield. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, my brother. Love you. Love you too, Empress. You have a wonderful And when I get to Chicago, we are we're gonna get together when you get up to chicago you just reach out girl because like i will i will i will make it a point to get together and we will we will share some time in chicago together thank you so yes 69 with empress thank you so much um i am going to return to 71 because that's where i started and this is my number for today not knowing is true knowledge presuming to know is a disease first Realize that you are sick, then you can move towards health. The master is her own physician. She has healed herself of all knowing. Thus, she is truly 